However, in just a moment, Don heard a loud thud, then another, and a third. When he opened his eyes, the sight was an ugly one, but it was a relief nonetheless. The ghoul that had been after Don was lying in pieces on the ground. Don had no idea how the monster had died, but he didn't have time to worry about it anyway. More ghouls were starting to emerge from the corn, and the knights were almost on top of them. The battle would start in moments, and he needed to get out of range in a hurry. As fast as he could, Don rushed behind the nearest house and started to get a pretty good idea. Those monsters could definitely jump a lot further than a human being, but he doubted that they could get all the way to the top of a house in one leap. Quickly, Don braced his body between the wall of the nearest farmhouse and one of the nearby support poles for its porch, then scaled the wall by climbing to the top of the porch's overhang. After that, he swung one arm over the top of the porch roof, then climbed up a nearby window sill to the roof of the farmhouse and peered over the edge. Down below, the knights had made their first attack and were charging through the ranks of the vicious undead as fast as they could. Swords and spears were drawn and wielded expertly as Don watched in awe. From there, he counted the knights on the field of battle and discovered that there were twenty, all displaying great expertise in tracking down and fighting the undead creatures. Soon, the last of the undead fell to the sword of one of the knights, and Don was amazed by the sight. There had been something like twenty-five ghouls hiding in the farmlands, but every last one was dead. As soon as the last of the ghouls fell, the knights started combing the farmland for more, but none were found. The whole operation was over in fifteen minutes, after which the knights started to regroup and take an inventory of the enemies they defeated. They seemed to have picked one to function as a commander for the day, and he organized the count of the defeated ghouls, counting up the bodies and asking each of the knights how many they'd killed. At last count, the enemies lying dead on the ground were twenty-six. The ones killed by the knights had only been twenty-three. At first, Don wasn't sure what the purpose of the count was, but as the knights started to gather up the ancient bodies with ropes and drag them away from the fields on their horses, the commander remained behind, looking a little worried. It was dangerous to watch us, you know, the knight commander said sadly, and Don felt about ready to jump out of his skin when he heard that remark. It had been directed at him. Yeah, Don replied from his place on top of the farmhouse roof, too stunned by what he'd just seen to speak with much confidence. I just had to... I had to see what it was like. Real knights, I mean. However, to Don's amazement, the knight didn't look angry at all. In fact, he seemed a little amused by Don's refusal to follow the standard emergency procedure. I guess I can't blame you for being interested in our work, the knight said with a smile. But I hope you got a good look during this battle, and I hope you never forget anything you saw. I want you to keep running every step of that battle over in your mind, because if you ever want to be a knight yourself, or even a guard or soldier, you'll need to know what it means to fight to protect others. There's a lot that you can learn from what you just watched. Of course... The knight continued, donning a very serious expression. If you don't learn a lot from what you've just seen, you'll have to endanger yourself again for no reason. I don't want you doing that, no matter how brave you are. You can't help anyone if you're dead. The knight had said that very sternly, but for some reason, Don didn't really feel as if he was being reprimanded. The knight commander seemed more like he was trying to help Don by giving him advice on how to fulfill his dreams for some reason. Of course, there was no shame in growing up to become a knight. It was an honor to be an elite warrior in the Human Alliance. But it seemed odd that the knight was so eager to encourage a simple boy from Troma like himself. Don had expressed the desire to be a knight to many of his friends and teachers in the past and to his father, and they'd all told him the same thing. No one from Troma had ever become a knight before. Those words hadn't discouraged Don, however. In fact, when he'd heard them, it had made him feel even more determined than ever. Troma was a town of almost 3,000 people, but Don had lived there for his whole life, and it didn't seem to him as if the people of Troma really felt the way he did. They didn't really want to fight. Of course, every human had some desire to protect others and keep the Human Alliance safe, but most of the people of Troma were convinced that they could protect the Human Alliance in their own way, by supplying much of its food, rather than needing to fight in any real battles. The people of Troma were very peaceful and gentle, and they were convinced that they could live their lives without having to do any genuine fighting. Don was pretty sure that that was the real reason they'd never become knights or gotten very far in the army. Their hearts just weren't in it when it came to a fight, because they didn't really feel like they needed to fight anyone. Ever since Don had realized that, his determination to be a knight had been unshakable. It was his biggest goal in life, to get the chance to protect his people, to defend the towns and cities of the Human Alliance, and champion the causes that his people believed in, to protect their right to follow the dictates of right in peace as long as they lived. Don dreamed of fighting the worst enemies of his people more than anything else, however. It was a dream that he'd had ever since he was little. Don was the kind of person who could never be satisfied unless he was struggling with all his might to solve the problems he had to face, and his determination had only increased when he'd learned how his mother had died. 